Good morning and welcome to worship. Christ is risen. He is risen this Easter morning. John celebrates when he writes his gospel by saying, In the beginning was the Word, and the Word was with God, and the Word was God. And this morning I would like to acknowledge that the ground that we stand on is God's. Jesus, in the beginning, was the creator and sustainer of this planet and this earth that we live on. So let us rejoice and know that we stand on holy ground. Let's pray. Loving God, we thank you that you are here today. We are not worshipping a, a, a memori in a memorial service, but we are worshipping a, a risen Saviour, a Saviour who sustains us, cares for us and loves us we thank you that we can just rejoice that Christ is truly risen. He is risen indeed. Amen. I want to share with you the story on the walk to Emmaus. And I'm going to ask Ben to come and read that for us, please. Good morning and praise God. Hope you're all having a wonderful Easter. Um, and just continue to make Jesus the focus of it. It's a... Um, We've got an amazing, amazing Lord and Saviour. Uh, as Russell mentioned, uh, I'll be reading on the scripture verses that uh, talk about Jesus on the road to Emmaus, and that's found in Luke 24, 13 to 35. Now, that same day, two of them were going to a village called Emmaus, about 11 kilometres from Jerusalem. They were talking with each other about everything that had happened. As they talked and discussed these things with each other, Jesus himself came and walked along with them, but they were kept from recognising him. He asked them, what are, you, what are you discussing together as you are walking alone? They stood still, their faces downcast. One of them, named Cleopas, Cleopas asked him, are you only a visitor to Jerusalem and do you not know the things that have happened there in these days? What things, he asked. About Jesus of Nazareth, they replied. He was a prophet, powerful in word and deed before God and all the people. The chief priests and our rulers handed him over to be sentenced to death and they crucified him. But we had hoped that he was the one who was going to redeem Israel. And what, once, and what is more is it is the third day since all this took place. In addition, some of our women amazed us. They went to the tomb early this morning but didn't find his body. They came and told us that they had seen a vision of angels who said he was alive. Then some of our companions went to the tomb and found it, just as the women had said. But him they did not see. He said to them, How foolish you are, and how slow of heart, and believe all that the prophets had spoken. Did not the Christ have to suffer these things and then enter his glory? And beginning with Moses and all the prophets, he explained to them what was said in all the scriptures concerning himself. As they approached the village to which they were going, Jesus, as Jesus acted as if he were going further, but they urged him strongly, stay with us, for it is nearly evening, the day is almost over. So he went in to stay with them. When he was at the table with them, he took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and began to give it to them. Then their eyes were opened and they recognised him and he disappeared from their sight. They asked each other, Were not our hearts burning within us while he talked with us on the road and opened the scriptures to us? They got up and returned at once to Jerusalem. Then they found the eleven and those with them assembled together and saying, Is it true? The Lord has risen and he has appeared to Simon. Then the two, had to, uh, the two told what had happened on the way and Jesus was recognised by them when he broke the bread. Praise God. We um, get Russell back to share the, uh, the message for this time of year. Um, bring open ears 
and yeah, just continue to rejoice in Jesus. Amen. Thanks, Ben. Some years ago, I went on uh, an Emmaus weekend. It was called an Emmaus walk. It was a, a retreat and it was a wonderful weekend. But because it was called an Emmaus weekend, I expected it to follow the, a similar pattern to the walk to Emmaus. But it wasn't. It was quite different. And although it was a wonderful weekend, I found myself when I came back looking at that Emmaus walk and what did it mean. And as I looked at it, I thought, this is as much a spiritual walk as it is a walk of two people. Those two people, of course, we don't know whether they were two men. Most people assume they were. But maybe they were a, a husband and a wife. I tend to think they might have been because they invited Jesus to stay. And I know I wouldn't invite anyone to stay at my place without my wife's permission. But so whether it was or it wasn't, two people were walking to Emmaus. And I've tried to uh, make the, the walk to Emmaus with a mnemonic, the Emmaus Road, with E-M-M-A-U-S-R-D. And the first E is emotionally exhausted. These two were walking back to Emmaus. This was the day that Jesus rose from the dead. It was a day of discovery, of wonder, a day that we celebrate today. But they didn't know that. All they knew was that Jesus had died. How long had they been in Jerusalem? We don't know. Maybe they were there on Palm Sunday and caught up with the exuberance of Jesus coming. And maybe during the week they saw the, the way in which the tide turned so dramatically. And they saw this Saviour that they had put so much trust in, emotion, just dying, and everything they had hoped for was gone. And here they are, emotionally exhausted and trundling back to Emmaus. Their faith, and I felt about that sometimes I know when my faith feels dry, when the hopes that I put in Jesus are dashed, when I find that I'm disappointed with the way things are turning up. You want to get back to some form of security where you can lick your wounds. And here they were going back to the security of their home. Tired, worn out and devastated. And then there's the end. They met Jesus. I don't know about you, but sometimes when I'm engrossed in discussion and somebody comes up behind me, they startle you. But Jesus doesn't seem to do this. Jesus is the quiet intruder. He doesn't push his way into, uh, into our lives, but quietly comes in. And it's interesting, he says, what were you talking about on the way? That's a subtle little sentence because what it does is it empowers the people and the way Jesus spoke to people was in a way that often empowered them. Do you want me to heal you? What do you want from me? Can I get a drink? In every case, in a lot of cases, Jesus handed the, the, um, the gauntlet to the people that he was talking to. He didn't try to overpower them or outspeak them. And here he is posing in a, a, a quiet question. What were you talking about? What were you talking about? They didn't recognise him. And there are many reasons that are put forward for that. But I do think that grief can do that. Maybe they were disciples who had never been really, really close to Jesus and seen him from afar. Whatever it was, whether it was a late afternoon and the light was dark, they didn't recognise him. But they met him. They met this stranger on the road. And Jesus sometimes comes into our life as a stranger on the road that we meet. And as we meet, we start to recognise who he is, but not initially. Second, the next M is maybe. And this is a part of the Emmaus conversation that really I find startling. They talked about Jesus. He was a prophet, he was powerful, he's godly. And then they came up with this incredible um, little morsel that they said some of the women had amazed them by going to the tomb and found no body. And they found a vision of angels who said he was alive. And some went to the tomb. So they knew that little story. They knew that the women had been down there, 
They knew that the women had come back saying they had a vision of angels. They knew that there was a rumour that Jesus was alive. But the sad thing about it was they didn't check it out. Why did they not check it out? And that seems to be the stance of many. There is evidence of Jesus being risen from the dead all round. Evidence that abounds. And yet sometimes we fail to check it out. And then they said, but we had hoped. Well, I put and we had hoped to make it fit into the Emmaus Road. Hope for what? Hope that he would redeem Israel. They put their hope in Jesus. And these couple of glitches had turned their backs towards home. Home to the security. And as I read this encounter, I, th I sometimes think Jesus is a bit harsh when he says how foolish you are. But they were foolish in a way because they never bothered to check it out. The evidence was there, they hadn't followed a home and they were heading home. And so Jesus opened up so they understood the scriptures. I sometimes look at that part and I thought, I wish there was more. <laughs> I wish I could see what Jesus said. Did he hone in on Deuteronomy 18.15 or Isaiah chapters 53 or Zephaniah? Whatever it was, he opened up the scriptures and sometimes you wish you could have been there to experience what he said and how it all fitted in. But unfortunately, he leaves that for us to search for ourselves. But sometimes you find that in your journey you may be confused with a scripture that you read again and again and it's familiar but you, you miss parts of it and then all of a sudden it clicks and you understand. Sometimes we find that there is this wow moment in our lives when all of a sudden what we understand about the scripture starts to fit into place. And so as they walked along their hearts warmed because Jesus opened up the scriptures and explained to them that this was predicted so long ago. And so they get to Emmaus. And Jesus goes to walk on his way and they say, stay, stay with us. We have a choice. When Jesus comes into our life, he doesn't push himself on us. And we can say, stay with us, Jesus. Or we can let him go. And sadly too often I find there are times when uh, I struggle on my own strength instead of allowing Jesus to come in and stay and be in his presence and do that. And as they invited him in, Jesus of course didn't follow the usual protocols of a meal. What he did was he broke the bread and they recognised him in that action. A lot of uh, uh, assumptions about recognising Jesus. Some people say that maybe they were there when the 5,000 were fed. Maybe they were onlookers at the, at the uh, Last Supper. Or maybe there was just something that he did that clicked. And then there are a number of people who've said they've come face to face with the risen Jesus. And, uh, and you think, how would they know? Because they've never seen him, but they know. They know they are in the presence of the Almighty. The thief on the cross knew that. There are people like Nicodem uh, not Nicodemus, Nathaniel, who knew that. They knew they were in the presence of the Almighty. And here they were, they knew that this was the risen Jesus. The last word on that road is D. D is determined to tell others. To tell others. Off they went. These two that had trudged along the road to Emmaus all of a sudden were running back, all excited, back to tell the disciples, we have seen the risen Christ. We have seen the risen Christ. That's the journey. And, and I look at it and I see that's my journey. But it's not a linear journey. It's a journey where sometimes you feel emotionally exhausted. Sometimes you want Jesus to linger longer in your presence. Sometimes things are clear and sometimes they're not. It's a journey on the road of struggling, of recognising, of understanding and sharing. And Christ is risen. And today may you truly recognise 
the risen Christ. Let's pray. Loving God, we, we don't know why Luke put that little story in his Gospel, but we're thankful that he did because in many ways it represents our trip, our journey, our journey with you. And Lord, if we journey with you by our side, our hearts are warmed. And we thank you today that it was the risen Lord Jesus Christ who walked with those two. And today, the risen Lord Jesus Christ comes into our presence and offers to walk with us. So stay, Jesus. Stay with us. Amen.